Hey folks, CA Rachna Ranade here, and I can see my charger at the background. Samsung charger trying to fit into the frame, but it's okay. I hope you all are doing good. Uh, I'm having a crazy time uh, since the last one or two weeks. Uh, we have been working on a new course. Uh, feels exciting. Uh, super, super excited for the new course. Um, we are going to come up with this course on 26th of January. Um, and uh, wow, I have given a small hint about it, uh, not only on my Instagram handle. I think I've talked about it on uh, YouTube as well. Uh, no, Instagram, I did talk about it. I did talk about it on Facebook. Uh, on YouTube, I guess this Saturday, maybe I'm just going to give some one or two hints about that. Raviji is saying, disclose the about the course. Um, Okay, one, one hint that I would want to give, one amazing thing I would want to tell is that this is going to be my first ever course in Marathi. It's going to be launched in English as well as in Marathi. Uh, but super excited for that. Um, I'm not going to disclose the name. I, I just so want to tell it to you, but no, I'm not going to tell it. Uh, but very, very happy for that. Uh, because, you know, all my viewers on my Marathi channel were like, you have talked so much about uh, your courses on your website, uh, but all are in English. We would want at least one course, one beginner level course in Marathi. So uh, I'm launching it in English as well as in Marathi. So more details to follow this Saturday video and the Wednesday video. And anyways, next Thursday, while we do our live stream, of course, I can definitely talk about that as well. But it's just five, six days away. So we have been so busy about... Uh, <clears throat> the entire shoot ended in december and then you know all the edits and the reviews and the re-reviews everything has been like amazing but it feels really really good i need mean, uh, <laughs> uh the guess is already bosm marathi sorry personal finance and marathi uh -huh. mm. so whether it is going to be bosm marathi personal finance marathi it's either or of the two i i would agree to that uh ashwin yes it's a beginner level course um uh, is saying mala marathi <laughs> uh, in fact uh, when i was just telling this to you know one of uh, the people i met in pune he said i think if it's a beginner level course i very much would know about the basic thing but i would just want you to listen i would want you to listen in marathi for a long time and uh, that is that is the reason why i'm, I'm also excited for the course is what he said so anyways uh, i'm sure that it is going to be a good one uh, and super super excited for that uh, so with that, let us get back to our routine. Let's not waste a lot of time. I know it's 10. Uh, I knew that I would be late coming home. I just came home at like 9.55 today. So that is the reason why we kept it at 10. Um, so let me share my screen right away. We are going to discuss about Nifty. All right. So let's take the Nifty levels one by one. Okay. So first, let's today start with the super trend. Okay, since now, what is this date? Since almost 16th of December, the super trend has been in red. Okay, and since that day till also more than a month, we are still in red. So, super trend is bearish, is indicating bearishness, right? Now, we have to understand okay, where are the support levels, where are the resistance levels, and for that, let me just come up with the pivot levels. Now, if you see here. 17,600 was a support and we had discussed about 17,800 level if you remember this was the level that we were discussing about in one or two of our previous thursday live streams this was very well honored okay we didn't break below this now the next level that you can see here is 18,255 which is the pivot level so i feel that this pivot level can ideally act as a resistance now so we have to be a bit careful when it reaches that level uh so be cautious about this immediate resistance if you ask me immediate resistance can come at 18250 levels okay what about macd you can very well see that macd has just gone in green so uh, indicates sign of some strength but of course that should not be taken as a sole parameter for that right rsi doesn't show a lot of strength rsi is around 50 ish but a little bit downward sloping it'll be interesting to see if it is uh, if it so it will be interesting to see if Nifty closes above 18,250 
with RSI above 60, with MACD again in green, and with strong overall activity. But I'm not sure whether that would happen immediately or not, because 18 to 50, as I mentioned, could act as a resistance. But now we have to understand what could be a support in that case. So for that first, let's check the 50 days moving average. Oh, we are still below the 50 days moving average. Uh, this is, uh, let me just go to the settings and style okay method is simple moving average let me check for exponential moving average as well more or less similar okay no worries okay so as for the 50 days exponential moving average i will you can see that again it's a similar similar line that you can see uh again so 18,250, 18,292 or 300 chalo. still that is something which we can see as a resistance that may come up. But so uh, let us say nine days moving average, if I see that is coming to 17,995, we can take it as 18,000. How about two? I had 200 demo was way below that. So forget about it. So two things we have understood right now. Resistance, we can see at 18,250, as per the nine day moving average, which is like a very, very, very short term moving average, we can see 17,995, which is close to 18,000. Okay. Now, with all of these things, let us try and also understand one more point. Uh, let us try and draw a Fibonacci first. I'm just clearing a few drawings. Otherwise, it can become a little bit more tricky to understand. Okay. Let's try and understand. I'm just trying to see what could be a support as well. Okay. So, let's draw a Fibonacci and try and understand. So I'm just drawing out standard Fibonacci Alt F from here to here. <coughs> okay. Now, what can we see here? This is where almost where we have taken a support since last two days. Yesterday also opened here. And today also the lower point was pretty much close to this. What level is this? This is 18076, 18,000. So if you remember, we said nine day moving average is at 18,000. Uh, 18,076 is the fibonacci level right so both are indicating that okay fair enough this is what we can see 18000 support 18250 300 resistance is what we can see till now okay now let's try and see if we can get something on a weekly chart as well how has the weekly chart performed let us quickly see that i'm removing this as well okay Last week, if you can see, I'm just trying to zoom in. Last week, you can see this is a clear cut doji. And if you know, doji is more about indecisiveness. No one, neither the bulls nor the bears, no one are really able to win it. Okay, so it's it's kind of a confusion. But that is followed by this candle. I have not discussed about this type of candle in uh, uh, in my technical analysis course. Uh, neither 2.0 or in the original one does anyone know the name of this i would want to just see if anyone knows the name of this candle otherwise i'll tell you obviously but anyone can tell me the name this last current current week candle i would want to see the answers spinning top okay doji no hangman no It is, it is pretty close to a, a spinning top, okay? Not really a hanging man. It is it is called more of a pin bar. Okay, so uh, it's, it's very close to what you are saying, close to a spinning top, close to even a hangman. Nowhere a doji, Rahul, though. Uh, but we, we can also call it not a upright hammer. Okay, this is something new for me as well. I, I know what is a hammer. I know what is an inverted hammer. But upright hammer, I'm listening for the first time uh okay anyways uh so i hope you have understood uh this is also called as a pin bar okay so where now i'll again present my screen so that you understand share screen <coughs> so here you can see this the body of the candle is not exactly at the center it's it's a little bit above above the 50 percent of the candle right so this typically can be called as a pin bar candle. Okay, just, just a different name for that, right? So here we can see that the previous week was more of indecisiveness. But this week we can clearly see 
that the bears were trying to take it downward, downward, downward. This is the level that we had already discussed so many times, 17,800. This week's lowest point was 17,853 again. But ultimately, today's close is also 18,107. Okay. So uh, this is this is where we are right now. I feel that the bulls are trying to give pretty much a good fight for the bears. So one last time, 18,000 support, 18,250, 300 resistance. Can we see a similar thing from the option chain? So for that, let us quickly pull up NSE option chain. Okay, just taking some time. Right. So now, though, we are anyways heading to the monthly expiry now. So let us see if we can see a good support at 18,000 level. Oh, 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 have a look at this. 1,29,832 is the OI for 18,000. And if you see here, for 18,000, the call sellers are hardly 54,739. Nothing, nothing, nothing as compared to this. Clearly, I hope you can see from this, 18,000 is clearly going to act as a strong support. If 18,000 is broken, then I don't see any stopping till 17,800 and that too because of technical analysis. As for option chain, so there is no big support directly shows 17,500. I don't think that will happen though. <coughs> 17,600, 17,800, both are good supports. But I personally feel with such a strong option chain data, Nifty closing below 18,000 seems to be a little bit difficult. Okay, of course, option, option chain data keeps on changing time and again. But I hope you have understood about uh, the highest open interest being at 18,000 right now. Okay, uh, Pooja, if you are there, I'm not sure if you are here for the, ideally you will be, I'm sure. Uh, but uh, just in case, if uh, if you can just please paste the link of our f &O course, that will be great. Okay. Uh, chalo. So as usual, two, three things done. We did talk about the technical analysis thing. We did talk about what is the immediate support, what is the immediate resistance. Immediate support, we said 18,000, 18,100. Immediate resistance, we said 18,300. Correct? Then we discussed about the option chain data. And as for option chain also, I personally believe that 18,000, uh, yes, that is a link for you for the f &O course. Uh, as for option chain also, we said 18,000 seems like a very, very strong support, right? So as usual, trading view, say, of our technical analysis is done. As per uh, our option chain analysis, Nifty option chain analysis is also done. One thing is remaining. And which is that one thing that is remaining? With the smile, I'm sure many people might have gotten this right. Today I'm getting the messages pretty much delayed. On my YouTube screen, still I'm teaching technical analysis only. So uh, exactly. Right now I got the very first one. So I think there's a lag of almost 30, 45 seconds till I get your comments. And everyone has got it that there's one thing, one formality to be completed about the likes. Almost 1,500 viewers, just 360 plus likes, at least one third likes to one day. Come on. <coughs> so everyone can smash the like button quickly. And till then, today because it's we have started late, so I would not want to wait till the likes reach 500. I have faith in you guys. So I'm sure you will take it to 500 plus. Uh, till that, I will quickly go to some important news. Are kya baat hai? Aaj tak hat kar diya. Today, as I speak, 500 done, 531. Thank you, thank you. Okay, so with that, let us quickly go on to some key news uh, about you know uh, whatever has happened today, yesterday, just one or two days. Fresh key news is what I always, again, want to tell in the Thursday live streams. Uh, I just happened to see the import-export data. Okay, and if I were to tell you a few numbers, India exported goods worth 34.48 billion in December 2022. This data is important, so listen to it carefully. Uh, exports of goods is worth 34.48 billion dollars in December 2022, which is a 7.75 percent rise from November's figure, okay, 7.75% rise, good or bad, obviously good. So in simple words, our December exports have risen by 7.75% as compared to November. But if I were to compare December 2022 with December 2021, 
there has been a dip downfall of 12.2 percent hmm now that could be one warning bell that could be one of the early signs of lowering of or slowing of global demand since last i guess one one and a half month i've been talking about 2023 how how things as a global economic thing could be a little bit plus minus uh, and data points tell us if our exports have gone down on a month on month but if i'm comparing 23 so it's like a yoy monthly data year on year monthly data december 22 versus december 21 it's a 12.2 percent dip and that's that is a big one right so we have to be careful about such data points they tell us some hints about what is happening globally right uh so that is it about the uh, export import data as far as inflation is concerned uh U uk inflation numbers came up and uh, they reported a slight lower inflation as compared to november it is 10.5 percent as compared to 10.7 percent and there has been a two months consecutive fall in the uk inflation data okay so um nothing i mean nothing too big or too small uh for uk was unexpected lines uh, for UK inflation. Today, Asian paints numbers uh, came out and uh, the net profit for December quarter rose 5.6 percent a year on year basis to 1073 crores, while revenue increased by just a moderate 1.3 percent. Domestic decorative business was showing a flat growth, but industrial paint segment has done pretty well in this quarter. But the stock was down by 2.6 percent. Why? Because the street expected a little bit more of profitability. But still, the profitability is up by 5.6%. I guess the street expectation was somewhere around 6.5 or 7-ish percent. So we typically call it as missed estimates. Okay, so whatever were the estimates, they were not met. And that is the reason why uh, it saw a downfall of almost 2.5%. But if you have also seen crude UK oil, uh, it, I would want to share my screen one minute. Because stocks like Asian Paints, so those who have seen my fundamental analysis, I have discussed about Asian Paints so much in detail. Uh, we have tried and understood the correlation also. We have, we have talked about a lot of points. Uh, just in case, if your pro investor membership has expired, Pooja, if you can, if you can paste our yearly membership link as well uh, on our website, rachnaranade.com, so that you need not bother about month to month uh, recurring thing. You can just pay at once you get a discount plus a quarterly zoom meeting additional benefits as well right so uh, anyways going back to uh, the uk oil movement on a daily basis i would want to show something to you so that you understand what why asian paints has not been doing so well over the last few days now if you see here this is 5th of january okay when we released our pro investor membership ka video okay from 5th of january crude oil movement from here to almost so even if i take closing basis 9.82% increase in crude oil prices okay so is that all, i mean 10% increase in crude oil is something okay but if i were to try and see asian paints that is the reason why you can see a big candle today uh, almost 2.69% down and from 5th of january where are we this is 5th of january uh closing basis 5th of january closing basis we took stock is down by 4.69 percent so crude down by 10 percent and asian paint stock is down by 4.69 i'll round it off to five percent okay still i can say it has been holding up quite nicely it has not just crashed in spite of today's weakness uh so please understand the weakness was because it missed the estimate it's not like their numbers have come in negative as such okay uh the profit growth is there revenue growth is flattish but just because it missed estimates that is the reason why uh the stocks saw some correction today okay i hope you have understood some key points about uh asian paints as well imanji says namaskar Asnaji. namaskar imanji uh so every i think those who are following me on insta they know that i had been to Coimtur. I'd been to Sadhguruji's ashram, uh, got an opportunity to meet him, got an opportunity, uh, of course, with other creators as well, uh, to interact with him. Uh, and on the way back, I met Himanji. So had some nice chai and snacks. 
at his uh, cafe. Uh, all right. Uh, next one is by Ashwin. Hi, Rachna. Can you recommend us with some tool or website apart from Excel to calculate IRR for entire investments or provide me with a solution to calculate IRR for stocks in Zerodha? <clears throat> IRR calculators, I'm not sure whether you get. I, I don't use any calculator for IRR, Ashwin. But Excel is very easy for IRR. So easy. You can just download data, put a formula. It should be calculated pretty easily. Uh, let me see if I can just Google IRR calculator. The calculator site. But I've not used it. Tata calculator. Tata capital Cal Oh, actually, a lot of uh, mutual fund websites should be having it. Fin calculator has it. But I have not tested the accuracy of that. Uh, let me try and see if I can. I'll just write this down. IRR calculator. I'll see if I if I get some good calculator. Of course, apart from Excel is what you have clearly mentioned. Otherwise, if you have seen my video on IRR long, long, long ago, Puja, let me see if you can search that. XIRR, IRR, something. So you can type out IRR, space bar, Rachna Ranade. Ideally, you should be able to find it. Uh, and if you can, just paste the link of that video. In that video, I've discussed about how to calculate IRR using Excel also. So, uh, but you don't want that. So I'll have to check out for some other tool. If I find it, I'll definitely let you know, Ashwin. Uh, Rahul says, Namaskaram, Namaskaram, Rahul. Uh, I believe Tata LX is fundamentally strong. Do you think it will reach its all-time of 10K and beyond long-term? Thank you. Of course, yes. It's, it's a very good stock, uh, fundamentally very strong stock. Problem is with the entire IT space right now, Rahul, be it Infosys, be it TCS, be it Tata LXC, whatever. Uh, all, all these stocks are pretty much seeing a beating. So I'm just typing it out. Tata LXC. One minute. Just see it has. Let me see its pivot level. Weekly pivot is broken. Uh, it is seeing a big resistance at 6,400. I know it has corrected quite a bit from its high. Let me just calculate quickly from its high. It has gone down by almost ooh, 41%. Oh my God. But don't worry. I mean, if you're a long-term player in this, it's it's a very good stock fundamentally. Okay. Just let me compare that with an Infosys downfall. Infosys from its peak. Mm -hmm. Infosys from its peak has corrected 21%. Pretty less. How about PCS? PCS down by... Da, 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 da. 17% only in that I mean with with that uh, that Alexi has fallen way too more uh, than PCS or Infosys but it, it has risen pretty sharply as well let me just check out one month data uh, oh have a look at that I'll, I'll share my screen I forgot to share my screen one minute. present share screen This is a one month candle that I've put up. Okay, so this is what? This is, I'll just remove this. This is April 2020. Okay. <laughs> oh my God, that candle. April 2020 is here. And from this, we are talking about August 2022. A little bit lower than that. This is almost one minute. From here to, I want to make it a little bit more precise. 1,500% returns almost from a time span of April 20 to September 2022. So in a two and a half years span, if it has gone up by 1,500%, then a fall off from this to this level, almost 40, 41%. So don't worry about that. It's fundamentally very good stock. Don't worry. Okay. BPL Berger underperforming. Well, I just told right now, it's all about crude. If crude, crude goes up, these stocks are not going to perform well. 
Asian paints I just told right now. Any drone manufacturing companies for the long term? Paris makes certain uh, parts of drones. It's not a completely drone manufacturing company. And Drone Acharya from the SAV platform doesn't make drones. Many people just saw the name Drone Acharya. They felt that they make drones. They just make uh, software related support for that. Uh, but no specific company that I can think of, which is a pure drone manufacturing company from a long term perspective. So not really. Any other chats that I've missed? I don't think I have missed any other chats. Oh my God, it's on almost 10 29. Half an hour is over. Kya baat hai? I didn't. Did you realize we, we are at the end of half an hour today? Today the time went very fast. I did I did the trading view thing. I did uh, option chain. We did discuss news. All the basic super chats done as well. But half an hour nahi lag raha hai about the time went very fast today uh any any other quick questions before we wrap up today's session just one or two questions not more than that uh devi chan Shet is asking about my view on sula uh let me show up sula vineyards uh is what he's asking um if you have if you have been watching my um uh shorts youtube shorts I had made a, a separate shot on Sula Vineyards when it uh, went above its issue price. I had also mentioned that if you have invested in the stock only and only for, uh, you know, from a perspective that, okay, I just want listing gains and nothing else. Then uh, the day I made the shot, I guess one or two days ago, uh, I mean, because people panic, right? When, when the stock starts going down, they are like, yaar, it, it would have been better if I would have sold it off. So when I was discussing about the short, it was around 5% up from the issue price. But in the last two days, it has gone up by almost 9 point, almost 10%. Last two days also, it has shown good performance. So uh, in the same short, I had also mentioned that if you are a person who has invested in this stock from a long term perspective, uh, no worries. Uh, and she's also saying thank you for Sula Vineyards. Uh, when I when I did the IPO analysis, I had gotten some negative feedback stating that this is a paid promotion. Please, please understand. Whenever I make a paid, I, I do paid promotions. There's nothing bad in that is what I feel. Uh, any organization, if it were to run, it needs money. Uh, if I have four chartered accountants, one CFA in my team, uh, they are not going to work free of cost for me. I have a team of 20 people almost. So if I have to pay them well, I have to take paid promotions. The only thing is that if I don't disclose it as a paid promotion, that's a bad uh, thing. And it, in fact, even before the ASCII guidelines came, since then, I've been talking about paid promotions, if any. Uh, so Sula Vineyard, I, I get some comments stating that this is paid promotion. This was, that was not a paid promotion, of course. Otherwise, I would have ticked off the includes paid promotion thing. Uh, I, had, I had said that, yes, fundamentally, I believe that uh, it, it is a strong company. And uh, I had told that I'm going to invest from all five demand accounts. I did that. And from the issue price today, it's almost up like al almost 12 to 15%. So that is the case with Sula. Uh, anyone who wanted to exit only for listing gains, I think still there is a chance you can. But if you're there from the longer term perspective, to Bathini is Adabi immediately to Heni. Kya baat hai? Thank you. Thank you, Rajendra. <laughs> Uh, all right. Views on DMART, please. So I will do one thing. There are many people who are asking about this. Do you want me to write a blog slash if time permits, if time permits video, but can't can't uh, commit you for a video on DMART? Because that is a stock which has for me to write a blog or video on demand. Ask your community. So I have I've inserted a poll right away. Uh, I'm going to uh, I'm going to keep it that way for like one next one minute. Uh, I want quick answers uh, because I have seen a lot of people asking about demand. Uh, so I just thought of putting this up as a poll. 
if I get like more than 75% of people saying, yes, we want a, a video or a blog, as I said, I can't promise for a video because uh, two course courses coming up plus uh, budget is around the corner. So not sure about a video, but yes, uh, at least a community tab posters at least can be done. Mm. So 30 more seconds quickly. If you can tell me, would you want me to give some inputs about DMART? At least 500, so 500 votes done. I would want to stop the poll. So 10, 9, 8. Mm, tick, 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 tick. One minute ago, I So end poll. So if you see that 89% people have said yes, no is only 10%. So okay. So those who want to read, uh, we I will definitely try and make it a point that at least uh, me and my team would put up a blog for you day after tomorrow. Give us one day time for research. And day after tomorrow, uh, we would write a blog on DMART specifically. Where will you get the blog also? I'll tell you. DMART blog. Crux of that, if if I want, I can make a short. Uh, please excuse me for the video. I, I really doubt if time would permit me to do that or not. So present screen share for just in case those who are not sure. For those people, I'm telling that you have to just go to the blog section here on our website. Okay. I hope everyone is checking out, reading out the blogs. Every Thursday, we do write a weekly review of the blog as well. Everyone has to know that we are not here to give tips, but we do discuss about what is the chart pattern, uh, where is the support, where is the resistance and all that. And uh, on 2nd of January, we had shared the technical analysis of NMDC and had put forward the analysis that it will show bullishness if it sustains above 125. The stock was trading at 125 at that time. And in a matter of few days, it made a high of 131, which is 5% above the price of 125. And uh, we also write which day we had mentioned about that. So this was 2nd January when we had mentioned about this. Today is 19th January. So hardly in a matter of what. Very less trading sessions. 12, 12, 12 trading sessions roughly. It went up by almost 5%. I uh, highly recommend you to read the daily blog that we write. It's a technical analysis special blog. Uh, but then uh, we also try and put up... Uh, one or two key news for the day and we make it a point that it is not a big blog we we make it a point to write here charge ka weekly blog is the disclaimer might not be there uh, we write it that it's a three minute read not more than that disclaimer comes up here the views posted in the daily blog are not suggestions recommendation only for education purpose i hope everyone knows that okay so i hope uh, you have understood about this as well Okay, so going back, I think we are done for the day. Ma'am, I have uh, two lots uh, of bank nifty 42,500 next week. Dow is down today. Should I exit tomorrow? Let me see if I do get uh, some option chain data. Quickly for Bank Nifty. Uh, if I can see that one. Should change. Mm, Nifty Bank. Are yaar, my screen. One minute, one minute. Present screen share. Option J. Bank Nifty, we'll take it to 25th January. Forty-two thousand five hundred looks like a very strong resistance, huh? Pretty much. And no big support around that. Thirty-three thousand contracts started here. What is your position? What did you say? Ma'am, I have two lots of bank nifty 42,000 CE. Have you, if you have written CE, ideally you should be comfortable. If you have taken a long call, then don't think that it will be a great one. 
uh, but keep on tracking have your stop losses in place and then take a call okay if you are on the short side i think you should be pretty much uh, happy if you are on the long side be cautious and see that if you have proper mechanisms in place stop loss okay that is it uh, ravi ji says rachna ma'am plan a visit to chandigarh or a session here <laughs> sure we'll try uh all right are ma'am could you upload a video on, on analyzing option chain basics of option chain I, i already have on our youtube channel don't forget to check that out puja if you can please uh, check option chain a uh, video and paste the link here FATF Al Cargo Logistics average ish FA I'll quickly check out the TA Al Cargo It is sustaining above the pivot level 382 it should sustain above that uh, this is a monthly point that I'm talking about on a month so long term basis hey yeah but uh, let us see even on a short term thing still it's above the pivot of 400 and Five immediate resistance at four fifty one. Strong volume came up yesterday. Uh, is able to sustain above the pivot point. Uh, MACD it's at a resistance. Be a bit careful. See if it is able if it is able to cross four thirty and sustain sustain above that four thirty four fifty can be seen as two immediate barriers after which. 500 seems to be like the next resistance uh, i think that is it uh, it was fun discussing uh, today's live stream i'll see you on the next thursday live stream next thursday our course might have been launched the course launch is on 26th of uh, january uh, so i'm super excited for that i hope you'll keep on checking our website as well uh, see you on the next Thursday till then take care jai hind and bye bye